Well, and good day to you all. Thank you so much for viewing this channel and particularly this video post. Today, I first of all want to begin by wishing everyone happy holidays, whatever holiday you may be celebrating this week. Obviously, it's Christmas and related holidays here in the U.S., but there are other holidays, I'm sure, being celebrated elsewhere. So, happy holidays, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Now, today I want to talk about some breaking news that I found over at the website SciPost.org, in which they discuss a study that is soon to be published in a scientific journal dealing with the genetic overlap between ADHD and dyslexia, otherwise known as reading disorder. Now, I'm not going to spend much time on this website, partly because it has ads, but if you want a sort of layman's interpretation of the article, you can find it over at SciPost.org, and I've put the link over in the description for this video. But I'm going to go over and take a look at the actual study that appeared in Molecular Psychiatry. Uh, and although it was published online recently, it is scheduled to appear in print in early 2025. So it's a very, very recent study. Now, this particular study involves a large analysis, in fact, a rather unusual analysis a factor analysis of a large set of genes that have been involved in various psychiatric and developmental disorders. So this is sort of a step up from simply doing a genome-wide scan and looking for different sites in the genome, known as loci, locations, that might be linked to a particular disorder. This particular analysis takes that and then goes looking at different bands or factors or dimensions that underlie all of these genetic relationships to see whether these factors map on to certain psychiatric and developmental disorders. And the authors were able to use a huge amount of genetic information from more than 435,000 cases of various psychiatric and developmental problems compared to more than 2.3 million controls. They were using the 23andMe data set. So very, very large data set, making it possible to study certain genetic locations that might have been missed in smaller studies because they didn't have the statistical power to identify genes that are linked to a disorder but might have very small effects. So let's continue on with the results of this very important study. The authors found that there were five different factors or dimensions that were linked to these genetic sites. In other words, we could reorganize these risk genes into those four, five different factors mapping onto developmental and psychiatric problems. First of all, they found five factors, as I've said. One of those was related to compulsive disorders like OCD and Tourette syndrome, and even anorexia nervosa, which we know is related to sort of the perfectionistic and even obsessive aspects of these other disorders. The second was a link to psychotic disorders, which you know is bipolar disorder and schizophrenia. The third factor involved, no surprise, internalizing disorders. And those were, of course, autism spectrum disorder, uh, oh, excuse me, um, anxiety disorders and major depressive disorders. Sorry about that. Finally, they found a fourth factor that was neurodevelopmental in nature, and that included autism spectrum, as you would expect, but also ADHD, as we would also expect. Those two disorders are linked to each other. But the surprise was factor number five. This was a factor related to learning difficulties, but specifically aspects of ADHD and of dyslexia, reading disorders. So they found that certain genetic locations, 49 in fact, were shared between these two disorders, helping us to understand why there's a higher risk 
of ADHD in people with dyslexia and vice versa, a higher risk of reading problems, dyslexia specifically, in those with ADHD. So very important. By the way, the 49 locations in the genome were actually related to about 174 different genes. But some genes are located next to each other, and therefore they occupy a single location within the genome. Just a little clarification there. So 49 different genetic sites in our genome that are related to both ADHD and to dyslexia. Now, let's explore this relationship a little further. I've created a small PowerPoint presentation for you here. Let me just bring it up. There we go, yours truly on the screen as well. Reading disorders and ADHD, what's the overlap? In clinical practice, it's between 20 and 40% of people who have one disorder have the other. And the relationship goes both ways, by the way. It's not what I would call a one-way comorbidity, like we see between, say, ADHD and Tourette syndrome, where people with ADHD have a very low risk for Tourette's, but people with Tourette's have a very high risk of ADHD. That's a one-way comorbidity. We don't see that here. We see it go both ways to an almost equal extent. So again, 20 to 40% of people with one have the other. Now, what is it that accounts for this overlap? Well, as the paper makes plain, one is at the level of attention deficits. Both disorders have attention problems that appear to be shared, and that might include concentration, focus, distractibility, and other attention problems that go with each. They might also be sharing certain cognitive deficits, what the paper refers to as learning difficulties, that are related to expressive language. We know that people with reading disorders have trouble with articulation and expression, hence the phonetic deficits that often go with dyslexia. And we know that ADHD individuals often have articulatory difficulties or expressive language problems, mainly due to their motor control difficulties. And I think to a lesser extent, the problem with executive functioning, that is organizing your language in order to say something. And then of course, both of them have difficulties with reading comprehension, but perhaps for slightly different reasons. In dyslexia, it may have to do with the misarticulation, mispronunciation of the words, and therefore you may not necessarily get their meaning if you're not pronouncing them and identifying them correctly. In ADHD, as we'll see, probably has more to do with the executive deficit of working memory. And finally, as this paper makes plain, one reason for the overlap, probably explaining these other psychological shared factors or characteristics, is the genetic liability. There are shared genes that increase the risk of having both disorders. Now, I just want to spend a moment and explain to you that the reason that we see comprehension problems in ADHD is because ADHD is associated with massive problems with working memory, holding information in mind so as to further analyze and organize it and then use it to guide subsequent performance. People with ADHD have significant problems with this holding relevant information in mind. And that, of course, means that if you can't hold it in mind very well, you can't extract as much meaning from what you're reading as can people who don't have ADHD and those working memory problems. So the comprehension deficits, at least that we see in some aspects of dyslexia, appear to be more directly the result of ADHD and working memory. But as I've said, there could also be comprehension problems related to the articulation and phonetic deficits. Now, what does this overlap mean for management of these conditions? Well, <clears throat> comorbid phonetic and receptive language problems that are associated with ADHD and with, um, to some extent, other language problems are likely not to improve with stimulants. So the language difficulties, especially receptive language and phonetic identification in dyslexia, we don't see a lot of improvement with ADHD stimulants and to some extent with non-stimulants. However, 
we do see improvement in the shared attention problems, reading speed, and the articulation difficulties that may be linked to ADHD. Those can be improved by the stimulants and to a lesser extent, the non-stimulants. And by the way, the comprehension difficulties that we see in the overlap or in ADHD specifically, those are likely to improve because stimulants improve working memory, but they're not likely to see improvements in comprehension that are related to the receptive and language and phonetic problems that I've already mentioned. Now, some research shows that reading speed and articulation can also be improved by atomoxetine. But notice again, not so much the language and phonetic expression problems that are linked specifically to reading disorders. So intensive tutoring in reading skills and other educational interventions are still going to be needed for these comorbid cases of ADHD with reading disorders because the ADHD interventions aren't going to address most of those difficulties, even though they might improve some of them as we've already discussed. My perspective is that despite the shared genetics and thus the shared phenotypes or symptoms between the disorders, there is more that is not shared than that is shared. And therefore we should continue to view these as distinct disorders despite the shared genetics because by viewing them as distinct disorders, we understand that they're going to require separate interventions and that the interventions for one are not going to eliminate or dramatically improve the symptoms of the other condition. So each requires their own focused intervention, even though some treatments for ADHD medication might result in some improvements in kids and adults with reading disorders. Okay, well, that's it for today. Thank you for joining me for this short video. I hope you found it informative. As always, if you like the channel, recommend us to others. If you found this to be informative, share it with people you think might have a need for this information. And of course, being the holidays, I once again urge you to have happy holidays, everybody. And as always, live well, be well, and take care. Thanks for joining me.